Hey all, this is E. It's late. It's obviously uh, well after the market closed today. My discipline is to try to do a video um, or a recap every day. Helps myself and obviously team members to try to get their mind around uh, the day's activities and then what are we looking for the following day and days and how do we learn from experiences from one day to another. Uh, this was posted pre-market showing where I thought uh, the green buy zones were, where the yellow neutral zone and the red resistance zone uh, coming into today's activity. And this is a big boy chart that we use to help gain perspective on the bigger picture. Pre-market again, taking a look at where we were, the big idea of this 55, obviously in our mind the year open. We've been stressing that in the recent videos that this was the line that uh, we thought the market is making progress for the year above it and below it uh, would be seeking further support. We decided today 52 to 55 should be um, an important support area and if that could not hold then obviously anything went coming south side. Above it obviously any retests in our recent activity would be valid and then if we take out uh, that previous high anything goes. Lunchtime we were thinking that the market was uh, boxed this 55 to 52 important support and we felt just the opposite up here at that 62 zone would be very uh, important resistance if we broke through it anything goes and logical targets would first obviously become that 65 area 66 which was the gap um, <clears throat> the 68 to 69 area an area of resistance prior to that and then obviously any highs it could get if in fact we could get out and in into the next box up here into the 70s and we felt that uh, anybody that was trading would want to be flat so we said even if we do get a, a push south side more than likely we will get a squeeze back up towards par towards uh, neutral um, by the news because most traders would want would not want to stay exposed uh, when major news coming out. We clearly had the idea that the <clears throat> buy zone was 52 to 55. We thought initially that the shorts were targeting that 57 to 54 idea. That would be the RTH low a couple of days ago. And anything below that was the good fortune running into the 52s to 55 zone. We thought long side first just box box that range and do range trading until news came out. We're looking at a 10 minute chart or TH. We noticed that uh, several things. First, uh, the lines underneath on the daily chart, this blue line was around 49. We felt 49 to 50 <laughs> would be the absolute um, dividing line today and then depending on whether or not we could get momentum and take out these prior couple of highs, the high at 75, 75, then would target the 83, which would be our T2 for the day. Once above that, then anything goes, and as the trades develop, we uh, projected several other targets based on techniques that we use. We advise all of the shorts to be done by 55. We felt that this was the big area, 55. Any overflow into the 52, we felt this would be the buy zone, just knowing certain things we know about the way, uh, especially FOMC tends to react. Pre-market, <clears throat> we advise traders not to think big, save their powder for later. If you wanted to trade, think range trade, risk two, make a couple. The idea and get a few points you could use for risk capital later on when a two or three point stop would work to make you 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 points or more. Half gap trade we felt use the 62 zone for the resistance uh, thinking that is half gap area. When the news comes out <clears throat> we like to look at a fast chart usually something like a two minute chart or a three one's a little bit tight for me I like a two or a three. First thing coming out of the gate when we took off we said but first pullbacks are viable 
breakout we determined was 74 75 area um, that was a prior high zone and we said just stick a couple of points underneath it as support don't think about a 10 point trade coming backwards think about having to get by this 74 to 75 before anything else mattered really so first things first first pullbacks are viable targets immediately became the uh, 81 to 82 area with 83 as obviously the T2 85 was called as the resistance make sure you got paid and 81 and a quarter was where we suggested the shorts if you shorted <clears throat> to take that off uh, interesting dialogue with a new trader in our room wanted to know at this point uh, should I be buying should I be selling uh, got into quite a uh, discussion with that young man uh, I said it's hard for me to advise traders I don't really know if you were participating already or not whether you've got profits uh, did you take advantage of our 52 to 55 buy zone but theoretically we could go to any high and this thing was moving and if we took out 85 then it would appear to me that the 88 target was next and then pro potentially a 96 target uh, we identified um, 96 and a quarter we just felt that was uh, the next significant marker um, it, I told him it was not a value trade at all it was a Momo trade and once the horse is out of the, the barn it's, it can run any high um, we finally decided on the 2102 resistance for the end of the day profit taking suggested if you could get a 10 point trade out of it you'd be doing well shorting at the 2100 area and if you use 2102 that happened to be a point uh, six one extension that's why I selected that number it's a very tricky day and, and it's hard to counsel traders that you know now want to know when once it's flying uh, because this was such an outlier day and and certainly at at the uh, 82's 85 target the, pro the, the problem really was it's already a 30 point day so we know we can get 30 points and 40 and 50 and whatever and today just turned out to be one of those days where it just kept eating stops and the market was just giddy and foolish and, and ran a, a, in an outlier day so, and you get those now and then that's why you have to protect your capital and take the stop out if you're wrong here was our breakout um, this was the chart once the 85 broke <clears throat> we decided that this would be the best frame of reference and this was that 96 target that we had talked about over here once we broke into this box so held this middle box in here took off and broke out through this is a third time through trade one two is a double third time through it came up took out the 81 82 box so now we're we're squarely in this next box we take out these highs and uh, basis of this chart okay the market's trying to bump into this high and and that resistance zone which we felt was significant so all right so we've got a 50 percent extension already at 96.75 and uh, so let's use the point uh, six one as resistance and see if you can get a little bleed back Anybody that hung in there and kept their wits about them uh, could easily have uh, put in their pockets 8 to 10 points um, on the late day contra as we had suggested. In the last couple of days for those who were in the room I made the statement that the FOMC days tend to go up no matter what is said. It's just like just let's just smoke them and then figure things out later. So I was already predisposed that I thought it would be a bias to the long side. Uh, nevertheless, I do not enter into a position I'm flat for news, and then I'll try to buy pullbacks and then let a trailer work the best I can. And uh, when we get late into the day after 3, 3.30, then I'm looking for better risk-reward opportunity coming short side. And truthfully, if you've got a good slice out of the move going long side, you don't even need the contra. So depending on how you play it, if you've got profits in your pocket willing to risk, uh, then it's okay to take a shot short side. And then if you're wrong, just take the stop out and say, all right, that didn't work. This was a rabbit dog day of extreme proportions. 
uh, we closed three gaps. We closed the one at 66. We closed this one up here. This is all basis, uh, the M contract, June contract. We closed this 92 gap, and we also closed this gap up here at 97. So these were part of our, our thinking these targets up in here. Once the 85 broke, then we felt these were valid targets and uh, basically good fortune to try to guess against a very strong momentum type day. Normally you will not close on the high of a day, even in, in a, a day like this. Who wants to leave their profits exposed after this kind of a great run? So normally that's a sequence trade by the end of the day to think a contra to come back and for a little profit taking. Um, 52 to 55 definitely was the key. We talked about that very early in the morning and we thought that was the buy zone so clearly we got that end of it right and then the guessing game once you get above the 76 it's it's anybody's guess so the most important thing is you never ruin your account by by trying to average in average in average in and that's a fool's game uh, against a strong momentum type and trade and you can see the 240 chart support area once we took out the highs it was off and running same thing on the 120 chart key support area, the daily chart, the blue line right here all pointing up, the red line right here in the weekly pointing right here we've come into it and bounced off of it and obviously on the monthly the green line here so all of these had potential to to go to the upside and once momentum starts it's anyone's guess where it's going to end. This is E signing off I hope you had a good one and I hope this helps your trading. Take care.